Hello, boys and girls, men and women of all ages, shapes, and sizes. My name is Owen Adams, formerly known as British Gamer, and this is something a little bit different today. As you know, I've been promising something with my new camera for a while. This is it. Yeah, look, I'm looking at, I'm sidetracked here because I'm looking at my own face on my TV screen here just so I can set up the focus. Because uh, it's a little bit of an old camera. Hello, everybody! I hope you're having a good time. Uh, I am away today. Uh, as you probably know, I'm off at a wedding. Not my own. I'm off at a family wedding. And I thought I would just put something up a little different for you guys. And so, as you guys know, on the channel right now, I've been doing a big old beautiful playthrough of all the Assassin's Creed games. And I thought a good sort of opportunity for a video would be, basically, what I think of all the Assassin's Creed games in comparison with each other. So it's sort of like a ranking video. Now, as you guys know, I haven't played Odyssey yet, so... I'm a bit behind the times on that, so Odyssey is not on this list. But I have played pretty much every other Assassin's Creed game, so... Uh, as you look at the rankings, you might see some games that other people haven't bothered ranking, like, um... Well, the first entry on this list, in fact. So hopefully you enjoy the video, hopefully this will be entertaining to you while I am away, and uh, I should have some other stuff prepared so that there is something for you guys to enjoy while I'm gone on top of this too. So thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoy this video, and uh, I will see you guys when I get back uh, on Sunday. Now in this I'm mostly going to be leaving out mobile only and browser games because uh, I don't really think they're like main series games really, they don't quite have the same approach as the other games do. They're not trying to tell a single standalone Assassin's Creed story, they're more like tie-in products. But, first on my list is actually Altair's Chronicles, which was originally a mobile game, but it did also get released on the Nintendo DS, and is a sort of complete little product, an Assassin's Creed game. Uh, it just happens to be a terrible one. Altair's Chronicles is ugly, hard to play, doesn't really feel much like Assassin's Creed, and it kind of clearly comes from the era of Gameloft when they were making tie-in games, where, to be quite honest, there wasn't a lot of scrutiny to what the handheld versions of the game would be like, and honestly, kinda bad. Uh, this is a poor game, uh, not the worst uh, Assassin's Creed tie-in product, but the lowest on this list because it's the one that I think was trying to sell itself to actual gamers as if, hey, love Assassin's Creed, got a DS? You will love Assassin's Creed uh, Altair's Chronicles. Uh, unfortunately, it's terrible. It is broken down into very simple stages. It doesn't have much in common with the main games. And while I did play this to completion on a train once, um, it's not one I would ever think about going back and enjoying again because uh, I have better things to do with my life. <laughs> Next up is Assassin's Creed Bloodlines. Now this has something a little bit in common with Altair's Chronicles, in that this is also a handheld game, except this one was released on the PSP. You may notice a trend in some of these uh, very low-end entries on my list. Assassin's Creed Bloodlines on the PSP is actually a really bold game. Uh, it really does try and be a complete Assassin's Creed game on a handheld. Altair's here, you play the same character you play from the first game, it is kind of a conclusion to the first game's story. Uh, Altair visits Cyprus, where he finds that, in part to uh, explain why there are so few people in the city, the entire island's been quarantined, and the Templars have taken over. Uh, it actually has a lot in common with the first Assassin's Creed game. It has a very, very similar setting. Uh, Altair is the hero. It uses very similar UI and a lot of the overlays and stuff. Um, it's not a bad game, in fact, for the PSP at the time when it was quite difficult to make uh, really impressive games on a handheld. This is a really impressive achievement. Unfortunately, it's just not a very good game. Obviously, it models itself on the first game in terms of gameplay, and yet loading screens break up every city, the story is not that interesting, and the climbing, running, and jumping just doesn't have the variety it has in the final game. It feels closer to Assassin's Creed 1 than any of the games that have followed. It never really lives up to its promise of being a full Assassin's Creed game on a handheld. Which brings me to Assassin's Creed Liberation, the next on my list, and maybe a little bit lower down than I think a lot of people would think. Uh, this isn't a bad game, in fact I'd say from here on out, most of the games I mention I actually like in some way or other. Liberation is really interesting, you play Aveline de Grand Prix, 
or Grand Prix, I don't know, maybe she's a race car. A young woman living in New Orleans who is uh, essentially caught between two worlds. Uh, she's mixed race, so she uh, doesn't quite fit in in the racially sensitive time she is living. She, Her mother was a slave, father was a nobleman, so she is a noble. Uh, she has three kind of guises she can adopt, and those different mechanics of how different ideas play out between the various roles Aveline has to inhabit in her own life, and the way that plays in gameplay, assassin, noble, slave, the way that plays in with different features, the way you can actually wear different guises and go in different places depending on which personality you, you stick with, is legitimately interesting. It's quite a short game, it's quite a small game, it works its best when it feels most like Assassin's Creed when you're in New Orleans running along rooftops, but too often the game sends you running through swamps and very unpleasant, boring set of Mayan ruins that you get stuck in for a really long time. The game has too many detours, it has a lot of interesting ideas, but it feels too much like a compromise. At its best, you feel like you are playing a genuine, full console Assassin's Creed. At its worst, it leans too far into Bloodlines, a very limiting experience. It doesn't feel like you quite had enough budget behind it. And next, the one that started it all, the first of our home console titles on my list, although we do have one more handheld game to come. Assassin's Creed 1 will always have my thanks for introducing me to the series that has gone on to be my most beloved video game franchise. I love Assassin's Creed, and I like this game. The first time I played it, I was really disappointed. I didn't actually get it, I guess. It didn't really gel with it. Uh, but I will say, I came back to this game after playing Assassin's Creed 2, and I think it holds up a lot better if you revisit it, kind of versed a bit better on the series and what it's all about. There are still some features in this game that I think have never been beaten. Uh, this game has the best assassinations. Choose your target, head out to them, take your time. Choose how you're going to approach them yourself and then just go for it, you know? You get to choose how you're gonna to attempt to do the kills, how you're gonna work with it. That is fun. The game is enjoyable, the city designs are kind of interesting, but other than that, it starts to fall apart when you really play the game for a long period of time. There are only three cities in the game, you'll spend most of your time rolling through those same three cities over and over again, and every assassination is different in this game, but the lead up to every assassination is the same. Over and over and over again, you'll find yourself doing the same few recon missions in order to get yourself to the point where you are ready to go and take down your target. And, you know, it's not a bad game. It's at times a very good game. But too much has developed in video games since this game came out. And back to the handhelds. The next in my list is Assassin's Creed 2 Discovery. Discovery is the least like a normal Assassin's Creed game on this list, but I really liked it. It is a really unusual little 2D game where you actually run through stages. Feels a little bit like Sonic the Hedgehog. It's a very momentum based platformer, so you've got to run up, run down, get on ledges, get on hidden doorways. Uh, you play Ezio, it's a side title to the Assassin's Creed 2 games. And even though it's not very Assassin's creed -y, you do do assassinations, you do do sword fighting. It plays a little like Assassin's Creed 2 at times. This is essentially a fast-paced 2D platformer set in the Assassin's Creed universe that was legitimately fun to play. Not to mention, it had some of the most fun visuals I've ever seen in a game. This was before the 3DS, and yet the DS, this is one of the best looking DS games I've played, and the amount of depth they actually get into the environment. So you're running around in the same cities you spend time in in Assassin's Creed 2, and they look the same, you know, it's simpler graphics, but it looks the same, they captured that feeling. Not a lot to say about this one, the story contribution is pretty simple, it is just a, a pick up and play platformer, but it's a really enjoyable game. I know a lot of people miss this one, uh, I would really recommend going back and giving it a go. Okay, next on my list is Assassin's Creed 3. Now this will be something of a controversial choice, but probably not that controversial. Assassin's Creed 3 was very divisive when it came out, a lot of the common criticisms people have said of it, uh, they are still true today. It begins with a very long prologue that has a more interesting character than the main game. So you spend ages with a character getting to know him, then you switch to uh, Connor Kenway, who is probably not the most interesting assassin in the world. A lot of stuff was added in this game that I think is really good. When I replayed this earlier in my playthrough this year, I found that actually there's a lot that the game has in common with Red Dead Redemption 2. In the same way that Red Dead Redemption 2 feels like it comes from a different era of games, Assassin's Creed 3 feels like it kicked off that era. You've got a lot of hunting, 
you got a lot of side missions, you got a lot of different people you can talk to, you can go to all different places in the city. It feels like it belongs to that kind of era. Unfortunately, in a lot of other ways, Assassin's Creed 3 is a really bloated, boring game. The homestead just isn't fun, the missions you go to aren't fun, and while the game is not explicitly a patriotic game, it isn't like rah rah USA, it does lean into a more fondly mythic interpretation of American history than the other games did. Uh, you actually attend the ride of Paul Revere, you help George Washington become president. It is a game that wants to be historically interesting, but doesn't pick some of the more interesting elements of its historical setting. Worse than that, Assassin's Creed 3 isn't really that fun to play. Uh, the combat's interesting, but the very few moments where you get to feel like you're actually an assassin heading out into the city doing your job. You're always on the way to meet a new character or to interrupt an objective that doesn't seem that important to you. It never really knows if this is a game about Connor trying to dis discover a precursor site or if this is a game about Connor trying to kick off the American Revolution. It has things I like. It introduced the naval combat which would go on to revolutionize the series. But Assassin's Creed 3 is a troubled game that never really finds its focus. All right, next up we have Assassin's Creed Chronicles. Chronicles is a side title that it took me way too long to get to. Uh, initially released as three separate chapters, Assassin's Creed Chronicles India, Assassin's Creed Chronicles China, and Assassin's Creed Chronicles Russia. I'm considering these all to be a single game because I think really they are. They're still sold separately, but they are one kind of package. Also, they're all very similar, they all go together, anything I say good about one can be said about the other. Very similar to Discovery, this is a 2D, or 2.5D as they used to say, uh, Assassin's Creed game. 3D engine, 2D gameplay, it's actually really enjoyable. I suppose my criticism comes from the fact that this is not my genre of game. I don't much uh, love the uh, the 2.5D stealth game as a, as a genre, I'm not that kind of player, I like to be either 3D or I like to be nice smooth 2D. I don't love a slow 2D game. But I have to say, I played all three of these games. I enjoyed their contributions to the lore, which was not always hugely significant, but particularly the ending to Assassin's Creed Chronicles Russia really goes some interesting places, and I really enjoyed this franchise. Enjoyable, uh, not my favorite series, but hard to dispute the fact that by going lower budget, by going simpler, they ended up with a higher quality Assassin's Creed game than they'd had at that point for a little while. There'd been issues <laughs> in the Assassin's Creed series. All right, next we have Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Assassin's Creed Syndicate is not a bad game. I didn't put it higher on the list simply because it's a little boring. Uh, it's very plain. Uh, there are things about Assassin's Creed Syndicate that I actually really like. I love the engine, I loved it in Unity, and I love it here. As a British person, there are things I really enjoyed about the setting, a chance to go to Britain in a game and uh, and kind of spend time with, uh, you know, British policemen, things like that, although it is still weird that you can still fight them like the guards. I also like the train, the base being set on a steam train moving around the city, which I think was legitimately one of the most interesting settings for a base as we've had in the game. My problems with the game come more in the fact that Assassin's Creed Syndicate feels very obligatory. So much of what we see in it feels like it's just been included because, hey, you know, you gotta have this, you gotta have some gang fights, you gotta have some set pieces. The story's not hugely relevant, and while I do like the characters of Jacob and Evie Fry, this was the point where the series, to me, started to feel very rote. Even the Jack the Ripper DLC feels like it's expected at this point that that's what the game would offer, that's what they'd bring to us, and, uh, I think we could have done better than that. Maybe that's just me. Assassin's Creed Syndicate is, to me, a revision of Unity. As Brotherhood was made out of Assassin's Creed 2 and Rogue was made out of Assassin's Creed Black Flag, Syndicate was clearly built out of Unity's bones. And while it certainly gets rid of the bugs and it certainly polishes up the game much better than I'd expect, the end result it's hard to get away from just isn't as interesting to play. Now the next game here was something of a surprise for me. Previously, if I'd done a list of all my favorite Assassin's Creed games, I would have put this one right at the top. But Assassin's Creed Brotherhood has waned a little bit for me on my last replay. Whereas I had a really great time revisiting 2 and Revelations, 
Assassin's Creed Brotherhood doesn't quite have the same vibe for me anymore. It used to be a really standout experience, possibly because I really enjoyed just inhabiting Rome and spending a lot of time there, but revisiting it recently I found the setting just doesn't live up. So much of Rome is inconsistent, the main cities just aren't as fun to explore as any of the individual cities in Assassin's Creed 2, and so much of the map is taken up by broad, empty slums that will often lead you on long, long tailing missions that don't really have much to offer except follow a guy on a horse, get bored, repeat. Brotherhood still has some things I enjoy. It really introduced the recruiting assassins mechanic, which continued in Revelations and was a little downplayed in 3. But I think what really makes the series stand out is this is probably the Assassin's Creed game with my favorite villains. I loved fighting the Borgias, and I loved every little bit of the Borgia conspiracy. Uh, I'd still enjoy revisiting this game for its story, I just don't really stand to linger much in Rome as I used to. Still, not a bad game, very high up my list, and we're at the halfway point now, so I think everything from this point out, you can say has my seal of approval. Assassin's Creed 2, this is it. This is probably the game that made the Assassin's Creed series what it is today. It is a really enjoyable game, but upon revisiting it, I was surprised how much so many of my criticisms of the past just didn't hold up. I remember feeling like a lot of Assassin's Creed was iffy with a really good opening city and then a pretty good final city, but upon revisiting the series, I actually found I thoroughly enjoyed the whole thing. I still think it was a little bit cheeky to cut out some of the sequences for DLC, but I really enjoyed Ezio's trip to Venice, to Rome, to Florence, all these beautiful places. Special bonus has to go for Leonardo da Vinci, who is without a doubt the most enjoyable side character in an Assassin's Creed uh, game up to this point. After this game, the series starts to lean a little more heavily to including a lot of historical figures. We'd meet Charles Darwin, we'd meet Jack the Ripper, we'd meet Marquis de Sade, everyone. But here it's quite subtle, we do briefly get to meet Machiavelli and we meet a few other important people along the way. But Leonardo da Vinci is our real historical figure who spends the most time with Ezio. And they use him almost as a cue from James Bond, designing gadgets, helping you get upgrades. He is an enjoyable and likeable character in the whole game. Special bonus has to also be given to Ezio Auditori, introduced in this game, and while we'll be with Ezio for the next three games, this is where most people I think really fall in love with the character, losing his family, growing as a man. It feels very Shakespearean to begin with before getting more science fiction, more conspiratorial as the game goes on. Assassin's Creed 2 held up really well. It looks beautiful, it plays beautifully, and it's still a lot of fun. Ah, the forgotten Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed Rogue is one of the most underrated video games to come out in the last few years. Completely overshadowed by the existence of Assassin's Creed Unity, Ubisoft decided to release two games this year, Assassin's Creed Unity on next-gen consoles, Assassin's Creed Rogue back on PS3 and 360. In retrospect, this was probably a mistake, Unity really could have used an extra year, and there was a feeling that they were trying to rush their next-gen Assassin's Creed out the door. The end result was that a lot of people moved on and never played Rogue. Rogue is, however, a really enjoyable Assassin's Creed game, very much built out of Black Flag, very much built on top of naval combat, and a little bit of the revolutionary era city from Assassin's Creed 3. It's an attempt to harmonize the two games into one more coherent vision, and it really works well. It's a little gimmicky at times, they make a lot out of the fact that this is the first game where you play a Templar, and you do. You get a grenade launch, you don't wear the hood, you embody a different kind of combat, and you even have to put up with assassins trying to jump out of the shadows to assassinate you. But the core of the game is the same, and it's still here, and it still works. This is one of the largest cities we've got to explore in the game, and a beautiful naval area that never stops being interesting to sail around and explore. Assassin's Creed Rogue is, in many ways, Black Flag light. It is a shorter experience, and you never shake the feeling that you're playing a side title. And yet within that, it really does tie up this era of Assassin's Creed very well. It's one for the fans, but I'm a fan. Assassin's Creed Origins had a really difficult role to fill. Uh, after Unity and Syndicate, there was a feeling that fatigue was setting in, and Ubisoft had even given the series a year off so that we could get the Assassin's Creed movie in and kind of build hype a little bit. This game marked the end of Ubisoft's period of annualization, moving away from releasing games year in, year out, no matter what, and hoping for the best, to taking a little bit more time, being a little bit more patient with their entries. 
Origins was the first attempt to go way back into ancient history and took us to ancient Egypt, essentially to see the beginning of the Assassin's Order built. Bayek isn't really an assassin, but his story feels very true to both Ezio's story, Arno Dorian's story, and uh, the characters we've had along the way. But without feeling cliche or tired, Bayek is a very different type of Ubisoft hero. He isn't a grizzled white guy, and he isn't mopey and out for revenge constantly. His story is one of personal retribution and vengeance, and yet he sees his own role within Egypt as being more of a hero to the people. He sees himself as a public servant, and the way that plays out is fascinating. At times it gets frustrating that they really played up the RPG elements here, it sometimes becomes impossible, for example, to actually kill an enemy with the hidden blade if you're leveled differently to them. There's a certain purity of concept that's gone as the series has gradually moved more towards being loot focused, and one suspects that it may be a Destiny style Assassin's Creed game is in Ubisoft's future. Right now though, Assassin's Creed Origins probably represents the peak of the game in terms of quality of gameplay. It's the least janky the engine's ever been, and it's the most pure in concept the game's ever been from start to finish. It feels whole and coherent. It's not my favourite Assassin's Creed game, partly because I love the ongoing plot, and this has taken some weird diversions recently and is very downplayed in this game. I also don't think it really has much connection to previous games in the series. There is a feeling that Assassin's Creed Origins could have been pitched as not an Assassin's Creed game. It doesn't change the fact that it's really quite excellent. Now this is going to be a controversial choice. Assassin's Creed Unity is a mess. Its design is a mess. Its plot is at times a mess. Its protagonist is a very lame attempt to replicate Ezio Auditori. And yet, I love it. I love the way the game looks, and while the frame rate is still pretty terrible, I love the feeling of just running through Paris. The animations came in for a lot of criticism for being sluggish and slow, and yet the game has a feel like nothing else. I love Assassin's Creed Unity so much. The setting is beautiful, every building is a joy to climb. The story is wonderful with its ups and downs. You will encounter incredible villains and beautiful heroes and some lame characters too. It also introduced some features that I would love to see return to the series and would only really stick around as far as Syndicate. The murder investigations are absolutely wonderful, as well as some really haunting settings and some quite unusual changes. Unity feels so much like a callback to the Assassin's Creed 2 era games in next gen. So much has changed since then. You know, on PS3 and 360 we had Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Assassin's Creed Revelations, Black Flag, and Rogue. And the series moved a long way away. Unity feels like an attempt to consolidate and bring together every bit that people think is iconic to the series and put it into a single game on next gen with beautiful graphics and a beautiful city. And it mostly works in concept. Where it fails is, quite honestly, it's broken. And I feel bad putting a game that is bugged as high as this, but they've fixed a lot of the bugs now. And I'll... I'll... I'll put my hand on my heart and say many of the decisions Ubisoft made were poor. The companion app was terrible. The initiates integration was terrible. And yet, at the heart of it, I can't lie, Assassin's Creed Unity might be the Assassin's Creed game I've enjoyed playing through the most. I enjoyed playing it with my friends in co-op, and I enjoyed playing it solo, just exploring the catacombs and the sewers, doing those really cryptic cemetery investigation puzzles, trying to solve the murders, trying to hunt down the chests. Unity is a beautiful testament to what could have been, and if it had just had that extra year it desperately needed, I think we'd be talking about it very differently. But at the heart of it, that's what keeps it from the top spot. And then next, my favourite of the Assassin's Creed Ezio run. This is widely considered to be the weakest of the Ezio games, but Assassin's Creed Revelations is probably my favourite. I played it recently in my replay and was blown away again by how much I enjoyed Constantinople, how much I enjoyed just the traversal in the game, zipping around zip lines, climbing around. Uh, the story involving the Sultan and the Sultan's brother is absolutely fascinating, and probably the only narrative mistread the game makes is when it takes you away to a second hidden city later in the game, which is not fun and feels like too much of a diversion. While you're playing the game from start to finish, it's mostly entertaining. 
and the attempt to tie the game's story into the history of Altair and the history of Masyaf and uh, Al Mualim genuinely works and elevates Assassin's Creed as a game, making it a much more enjoyable experience. Much like Assassin's Creed Rogue, this is about tying two eras together in a way that they come together coherently and creatively. It's a really fantastic game, keeping most of what I liked about Brotherhood, but putting it in what I found to be a far more interesting city that I enjoyed a lot more. It also has one of the most genuinely uh, heartfelt relationships in the game as we start to see who Ezio's love interest and who he will finally settle down and start a family with really is and how they bond. Um, it's a really enjoyable game, not least because we see Ezio at the end of his life, really, coming to age in a time when he's fought most of the important battles in his life and still has a few things left to do. It's a real love letter to a character we spend a lot of time with, and I can't help loving it because of that. Alright, I felt bad putting Black Flag at the top, because, well, a lot of people put it at the top. And if I'd made this list before doing my big playthrough of Assassin's Creed games recently, I probably wouldn't have put it here. Because it's true to say Assassin's Creed Black Flag is an overrepresented game in terms of popularity. A lot of people like this game, a lot of people have only played this game in the franchise. It is a very, very well regarded game. And yet, it's hard to get away from the fact that there's a reason for that. Assassin's Creed Black Flag holds up, and the more you play it, the more it holds up. At the end of this playthrough, as I got to this point in my big Assassin's Creed marathon, I was starting to feel a little franchise fatigue. It was starting to feel a little tiring playing Assassin's Creed games, quite frankly. Playing them as close together as I was, and so intensely, it was draining me. And then Black Flag came along like a breath of fresh air, and it's hard to get away from how much it felt like that at the time, too. The naval combat is incredible, but just the look of the game. It looks head and shoulders above any other Assassin's Creed game so far. It's probably the first Assassin's Creed game to look really good. They'd always been a little rough around the edges graphically. It's enjoyable, it's fun, the story is incredible. Uh, and the main character, Edward Kenway, might be one of the most interesting assassins we've had. There are some criticisms that I think of Black Flag that are fair. Being a naval game, it doesn't feel necessarily like the other Assassin's Creed games, but I think in a franchise this long and this broad, it's only right that we open our mind to the idea that some games will be different to others. We give a chance for the games to wow us a little differently and try things a little differently. It's a pretty good game, and when as I was putting this list together, it was very hard for me to deny that if there was an Assassin's Creed game I wanted to just sit and play forever, it was this one. I could jump back into my old save right now and get sailing around and hunt some whales and craft some uh, ocelots. But I will say, if you only intend to play one Assassin's Creed game on this list, go with Assassin's Creed 2. It's the one that's the best for beginners. But if you're not really interested in getting into the franchise as a whole and you just want a really excellent game to play, Assassin's Creed Black Flag is a really exceptional game to play. Alright guys, that's my list. Hopefully I get this edited all out nicely so my ums and ahs aren't all in there. My voice is getting a little weedy now because that was quite an experience. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. And let me know what your order is in the comments. I want to know down below what you guys think. Let me know. Give me a heads up, be like, yeah, oh, and you are wrong. And I think that this one should be here and that one should be there. Alright, thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.